What's cracking, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Hungry People Podcast. It is your boy, Michael Patrick Buckley, here with my co-host AJ, the legend, Killer Dyka. Now, I'm not sure who's more of a legend, AJ or DTM, uh, but we have an awesome guest for you guys here today. I just said his name, DTM, known as Dan, the life regenerator. This man is a legend in the raw food community and just in world in the world in general. And it's just uh, so awesome to be able to share the space with you today. Um, what's going on, guys? Hey, what's up? I'm really excited to have DT on, DTM on once again. He's a really good friend of mine. Spent a lot of time with him. He's influenced me more than probably anyone else in health. It's a pleasure to have you back, man. Thanks for taking the time. Of course, AJ. It's my pleasure, bro. Nice to meet you, Michael. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I just remember even back when I was getting the raw foods and I was just binge watching all of your videos, man. They're just epic, epic stuff, dude. It's, it's so cool uh, to actually get a chance to talk with you. So AJ, thank you for <laughs> uh, being such an amazing friend with uh, Dan uh, and allowing this to happen. So <laughs> my right hand man on the elite video club. Heck yeah. yeah. I got to come well, to one of those. Uh, it's one of those nights where whenever you guys do a talk or something, I haven't been there yet, unfortunately, but do like a live. Yeah, no, it's a, it's always awesome. And the thing is that place has really become a family. I, I couldn't even, I can't even believe the evolution that's taken place over the last two years since like COVID came in and like kind of forced us all to go virtual and stuff. And then how it's evolved and just, you know, grown really close. I'm Dan, I'm actually three hours from dawn. So Dawn and I need to have lunch. I met uh, Larry in the group. I think that was the first person I ever met in the group. We had lunch the other day here in Tennessee. But anyway, you put together, you, you seem to draw some of the best people, whether it's the best products, you know, the, the best products, the best people, just people who are open-minded, people who are hungry to actually live better lives and not settle for the average mundane, boring, shitty relationships and food and all these things. And that's why we're so excited to have you on because you set the pillar very high in the foundation you set in terms of health is very impressive. And Dan, what we actually want to do today is kind of walk through the help the average person walk through uh, the steps to get to extraordinary health, how to take a person who's kind of sick and overweight or underweight, and they have gut dysbiosis and inflammation, and they can't sleep and they're stressed and they hate their job. How can they start to actually take steps in moving in a direction to have superior health such as yourself? Okay, cool. That sounds good. Baby. good. Yeah. Cool. So here's the thing. As you both know, probably better than anyone, the amount of medications out there, the amount of antibiotics, the amount of uh, chemtrails, the injections that people are taking, the chemicals in the food, the preservatives, uh, the lack of nutrition in the soil. I know that's controversial for some reason. <laughs> um, but this the is leaving great. people you know, malnourished and at the same time, they're, they're overweight with all these toxins and things. And how do we actually start, Dan, how do we actually take someone who, who really doesn't stand the chance without the right support or knowledge and start walking them into a more conscious view and body so that they can start to take steps for themselves and really learn how to get healthier? What, what, would, you t what would you tell someone who's interested but really knows nothing? I think what I would do first is ask the question, um, do you want to get well? Do you want to be healthy? Do you want better relationships? Do you want more energy? Uh, other people, cancer patients, do you want to live? You know, people get a hold of me, my grandma, what do I do? Well, let me ask your grandma, does she want to live? Because there's maybe three basic categories the yes, and you can see it. They're like, they're really, they just got off track, divorce three kids that just got off track, but they really do love themselves. They really do appreciate life. They do want to be their best. Then there's another level down below that where it's like, well, I kind of want to live for some ego type reasons. Um, but there's another part of me too, that's so beat up that I just can't, I uh, subconsciously I'm ready to like get out of here. And then there's the people that are just more like on the real fast track towards offing themselves, you know, the young uh, the, at any age, really uh, the people that just could never quite get kind of a connected to finding some reason to give up one thing to gain another, you know? Mm -hmm. And so 
Um, and you can train yourself to go from the middle category and really look at that. Why am I lacking love? What did happen to me in my childhood? Why uh, am I feeling so stuck? Or why do I have a low self-worth? Or why don't I appreciate life? And then there are those, the, the rare few that do have, um, that do really want to do better and feel better and live, get on the other side of this cancer or whatever they're, uh, you know, 37 and just out of the blue, they get diagnosed with something. Usually it's a lot of times it's fairly benign, but with the medical cartel establishment, they turn these little tiny things that, you know, um, aren't really a big deal into this whole freak show. And then it like they label it, it becomes a lot bigger then. And then it's a snowball rolling downhill because once you label it and you start feeding it with fear, tumors and darkness grow. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of finding out first and foremost, like you got to ask yourself, you know, do I want to live? Um, and there's just various levels of degrees of, um, you know, intensity, focus, determination um, to either, you know, stay healthy or to get back to a state of health. And it isn't necessarily easy. You would think that it's easy, but if you examine the truth of the human mind and the human experience and the human karma, of years and years of biological evolution, all of us have that kind of like, I can't secretly wait to get out of here. You know, this place is crazy, you know, I want to go <laughs> back to where I can travel across the universe with no time and be anywhere at any time and all of it at once. Then you come down, you're, you're in this thing and you're going, what in the hell? You know, why did I do this again? Right. But it's for a reason. If you can realize, okay, this thing is temporary. And, um, you know, then you're like, okay, I'm just going to be here for a while. If I'm going to be in this thing. I might as well take care of it. And then if I, you know, there might be reasons why, you know, like I want to have healthy children. So that's a reason, or I want to be around to see my grandchildren graduate from college, or, you know, you could find reasons. Some are like, some dudes are like cancer from head to toe and they live, 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 live. And then their wife dies at 87 and then they die at 92 and the doctor opens them up and the, the guy at the thing is like, holy crap, how did this guy even get out of bed in the morning? You know what I'm saying? Like it was the love of his wife, you know? So it's right. just, that's probably why the married men tend to live longer because the mm. us married dudes were like, I'm fine, get out of here, you know? So <laughs> if, if you really are honest with yourself, you know, um, cause the part of you knows that this is super temporary but then a part of you knows, like, if I don't take care of this thing, I'm going to be stuck schlepping this cancer ridden blob of putrefaction around with me, popping all kinds of pills in the last 20 or 30 years of my life are going to be a walking, living hell, right. because you don't have the courage to actually commit suicide. So it's a real big, broad subject. Right. The, 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 you know, the linear data or the um you know the process is actually very simple but the thing is is it is not easy because of the layers and layers and layers of um unconscious programs self-worth issues karma and so you can't really blame anyone but i do always ask the question you know do you want to live? And people are like, and then you can tell by their voice, you know, they're like, well, you know, the politically correct, everyone says yes, but they're like, well, yeah, of course I want to live. I'm real excited about it. <laughs> okay. This is going to be, this is like a two out of 10 here. We're going to really be working on this consult or to get this person a fire lit under their behind mm -hmm. to get it motivated. Then there's other people like, look, DTM, I just, I, I'm on my second divorce. He ripped me off. It came from out of nowhere and I just ate 5,000 candy bars and was depressed and went back to weed and drinking and I just gained 60 pounds and I've just got to 
figure out how to get back. And I, and I really want to do this. I know I can do it. I've done it before. I remember, you know, in the nineties when I was like raw and I felt great and I was glowing and everything was wonderful. And then I fell prey to this predator guy and he took all my money and now I'm starting over again, but I really want to do it. You know, so there's just different various levels. You kind of got to ask yourself where, you know, what your um, level of motivation is. I wish I had more, you know, I'm, mine is kind of like seven and a half out of 10. I wish it was more. I'm, I'm digging for more. And I found a key this morning for my own self is like that it's the, you know, when the better that you eat, the more connected you are to the source, which of course is the meaning of life. I mean, we can, not too many people have realized that they think money, sex, fame, power, you know, boats, cars, houses, material possessions and all that stuff or gambling and pleasure and cocaine and everything else under the sun. But really it's just the true treasure is remembering yourself, who you really are as an eternal being transitory. That's how we find peace. You know, that's how we find the kingdom of heaven. So you realize that if you are a spiritual person and you really want to experience the timeless eternal treasure of the self or the kingdom of heaven within you, then the, the food that is the highest vibration can really be a help to keep you um, in remembrance of the source. Because once you kind of lose that, you take the maya or the illusion all seriously and you take the body seriously, and then you have all the anxieties that are associated with um, identification with the body as opposed to, well, wait a minute, I'm an infinite being having a human experience. You know, So the more connected that I, this is my experience, the more connected that I've become with what I call God or the source or the self or the other 10 million names you can give it and I love them all, um, you know, the more that you have connection with that, then the more peace and ease you'll have. And then they'll be like, hey, F you, you're this, you're that, you're everything else. And you're like, I'm an infinite being. You can see that the person is hurting or whatever. You don't take it personally. But if you believe you're this, then you start fighting. And so, and then you ruin yourself. So if you really want to, the best thing that anyone and all of us should, can, and do is to to look in the mirror and change the world and stop trying to fix the world outside yourself because you are never going to really accomplish anything but if you change yourself boom now you when you change yourself the whole world changes and that's your point of power you know so whatever you want to be and whatever you want to see in the world, be it, you know, because like I was talking to myself this morning and, you know, everyone's trying to, you know, remove the speck from your eye and they have, can't even see the log in their own eye. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we all need to pull the logs out of our eye so we can see instead of trying to go around and remove everybody else, the specks out of their eyes, we need to get our own clarity and remembrance of the most high consciousness that we can have. And so that's what's happened to, with me in the food trip, in the vibration and the, you know, the quest for truth, you know? Yeah. And, and that was like the food trip came in as, as one of the spokes on the wheel, but then it kind of guides you back to the, 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 the way, the path of enlightenment and, and truly waking up to peace and ease and pleasantness within yourself. And so that's kind of like, uh, and then what I was saying was that um, the food is a great way, the, the, like when you water fast, I mean, it's just, it's just you and God. And then pretty soon you start to disappear. And then there's only God consciousness and it's so clean and pure that you can read people's minds and you see your old past lives and you're up on the ceiling looking down at yourself and you're just like wow this world they're a lot more than we thought you know and then like the juice fasting or the fruit and then the heavier you go 
the more muffled is that connection. You can't stay, you can't water fast for the rest of your life, but you can learn to have those experiences and then try to stay as balanced as you can so you can walk in both worlds and not forget what you really are, but also function as optimally as possible while you're playing puppet on earth. <laughs> yeah. Would, would you say that the healthier that you've become, the easier it is for you to stay conscious? Like, are they a one-to-one, -one, uh, like, are they one-to-one -one in terms of the healthier you are, the more conscious you are, or is it something different? You know, it's, I think it's, uh, there's varying degrees because I think you can be like 350 pounds and be a tr true devotee and completely aware of the divine consciousness within you. Right. Um, but you, you specifically, have you felt that way? Like for me, I felt as though the healthier I am, the easier it is to be conscious. And the easiest way to be unconscious is to feel like crap. I agree. I just wanted to make sure that I point out that, you know, everyone is God. You know, everyone has the same source energy. And just, yes, sometimes the, the apparatus is different on many different levels. Some people's pineal glands work better than others. Some people's hearts are in better emotional, energetic um, state. Some people have really great bodies and like their brains are just kind of like, you know, they're like big, huge, buff, super strong dudes, but they're just not, their brain isn't really, they're not going to impress anyone with their intellectual area that sophistication or awareness of spiritual concepts you know so it's it's um but to just to simplify yeah i mean the cleaner that your body is the easier it is to stay in those more expanded levels of awareness yeah uh, of I, oneness. I believe you watched the interview i did with uh, gino from the master fast system but something he always says is um feeling is knowing and i think that the stuff that you've always recommended has really spoke to me in that way where it's like you make the physical changes and you you feel a difference you don't need to be you don't need it to be explained to you and when working with people do you feel as though that can come across with the words or is it more along the lines of like you just kind of emanating that uh vibration you know it is the vibration first the greatest spiritual master will just, you don't even, he sits there, you walk in the room, you sit down, the teaching has begun. He's never spoken one word because it's an emanation of a frequency. And so kind of what has happened um, that I've noticed throughout this uh, experience on earth is that when people come around Dan McDonald, they get healthier. That's just what happens. It, 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 this is just, I mean, you know, and I don't even do anything then there's other times where there is more hands-on linear, like me handing them a juice every day. But it's just that whether it's with girlfriends, you know, they come, they get healthy, they lose the 20 pounds, then they, they break up or we break up, then they go back and then the butt gets bigger again. It's just how, how it happens, you know? So I'm embodying that and I emanate it as a silent feel. And then the YouTube is kind of like um, the entertainment for the brain that allows for that conscious frequency to come through. And everyone is, has a gift that they are emanating. And the more that they allow that channeling of that energy and just accept it and not really try to like take credit for it or be afraid of it and stop it but simply just allow, okay, this is what it has me doing on earth. It has me, it's like, I'm a little raw food puppet boy, eat your vegetables, you know? And that's just what it had me do because I was doing that. Then I went on YouTube 13 years ago today, as a matter of fact, was my first video. And then um, it just kind of went from there. And now I kind of feel like I'm a little bit stuck in, in a little rut when I want to just say, hey, you know, like, what really matters is the awakening of the treasure and then proper food. You know, we don't all have to have these diet wars and arguments and how dare you eat a piece of cheese? You're killing all the calves, you know? 
It's like, whoa, calm down, psychopath. You know what I mean? Like you're tripping out, dude. Because at the highest levels, what the vegans don't realize is that there really is no death. Most humans don't really understand that. There is no death. There's just constant transformation, you know? Now, as a yogi, I don't really eat the animal foods. I don't even, I try to eliminate even the garlic and the onions and the cooked food and even the salt will kick in the um, sort of the uh, savory sort of passions, you know? So the more plain and bland that your food is, the more your nervous system and your energy stays like this. But if it's like, oh, this is so delicious and wonderful. Oh, we're down and then got to do it again. And it's all, this is having MSG and I love the spicy flavors. And then all sad. Cause it's like, that's your dopamine brain. And everybody has it and they're like, oh, if I can get some dopamine on Instagram, then I can get some dopamine from food, but then it comes back down. Oh, they like me. Oh, this person doesn't like me. So we're on this dopamine roller coaster instead of getting into where it's like, that's what I've been doing because I'm tired of the roller coaster. Like, up, oh, I'm so happy. It's ecstatic. I'm in my manic phase. And then back down. Oh, they don't like me. I'm so depressed. I'm a loser. You know, it's like, I'm just sick of it, you know? And I'm just like, okay. I just want to get so what i've learned in my experience for this whole diet thing is the simple plain basic like as little spice and seasoning as possible this is not going to be everyone's philosophy but i've already had enough of the roller coasters the sex the drugs the parties the even the money the fame mr raw food fancy pants <laughs> you know sexiest raw food guy and all this crap you know <laughs> still is still show. is <laughs> yeah, it was great for the um, it, I'm getting to the point now where I want this for myself. But yeah. what is it? Is it really like, do you want to be young forever and have a perfect body? No. You know, that can be a side benefit. It's like, take care of the body, develop some good habits with eating and exercise and sleep. But really to find that peace, that peace and that mm-hmm. ease. You know, that's what I, that's what I want for myself. And so I'm on a more of a spiritual journey now. Now, don't, that being said, I'm still working very hard on mastering these habits with the food. I would say I'm definitely doing better than I've ever done on a regular basis of just simple, plain, wholesome foods. My program is just juice all day and then uh, a salad at night, you know, and that's just how I've been rolling. And, um, and really usually how many juices is that just for the people watching? Probably like, okay, it's about the average day is a quart of juice. Um, or no, I mean a quart of water mm-hmm. and then somewhere in the vicinity of two to three quarts of liquid light. And that'll be, and then around four or five, a nice, nice hearty salad, real, real simple. Nice. And, and then I, that's where I add my little bit of protein or fat, you know, cause I kind of yeah. hit the gym probably two, three days a week, hit the cycle once or twice a week, hiking once or twice a week, rebounder three or four times a week, trying to get it all dialed in. But with my <clears> schedule, <throat> I got to be very flexible because every day is a little bit different with worldwide uh, consultations and stuff. But I managed to keep a good rhythm and there's, the, some of the things I like to share though with people is to have like the one habit, several actually uh, that you do every day, but there is one habit that I have. that's kind of the, it's the bedrock and the foundation and everyone needs to have this. I think, I mean, you know, it's just good that I wake up at five and I meditate for one hour and there's, I don't think there's any better way than just, you know, um, than to connect with source or to make a conscious volitional, because it's amazing what you'll see when you try your absolute best to silence the mind, which is possible. It is not easy because it just is so jacked up, but you can get to silence. A little bit easier is to still the body. There's fidgetiness, but as you mature in your meditation practice, the body is more still, which helps to still the mind. Then you can sit there and observe like, wow, this thing is nuts. 
but you're the one that's enamored of the thoughts or you're the one that indulges in thinking. And you see that, and so if you're on the spiritual path, but this helps everyone though. Uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, I mean, five minutes is where I started, worked my way to 10, worked my way to 20. And then finally, after the 40 day water fast, God came down out of the sky and like sat in front of me and said, you're gonna meditate for one hour every day, henceforth. I'm like, sir, yes, sir. And that came in the <laughs> of course in a vision of a past life. And it was tapping at 3.30 in the morning, right towards the end of the 40 day water fast. Cause I said, oh Lord, what will you have me do next? And then the boom, just this thing happened at 3.30 in the morning. And it was so obvious. Okay, learn to tr truly learn to meditate and make it a daily practice. And it's been one of the best things I've ever done for not only my diet, and lifestyle, but my brain and my heart and my awareness and consciousness, just because the way this system is set up. And I think it would be a blessing and a benefit to everyone. And that conscious meditation of consciously trying to connect with the inner source self, divinity, mm -hmm. inner light, lightless light source, consciousness to be consciousness. And then it's like this huge expanse. And then once you've got the expansiveness, then you can go, okay, I need a new car. Let's work on that. I want to get a girlfriend. Let's work on that. I need to make more money. But coming out of the consciousness, that expansiveness, then you can learn to, you know, put your energy where you want it, you know, mm -hmm. and guide it guided and become a co-creator with the source energy instead of being reactive and letting the excitement control you yeah so it's it's like an expansion like logarithm <clears throat> right and so as you evolve and you forgive yourself it's easier to forgive others for their ignorance as you forgive yourself for your ignorance the coolest thing that I like about my life is that I'm aware of what I don't know. And that's what I'm trying to learn. And that is that self-realization, inner connection, um, you know, that it's, it's self-realization, it's enlightenment, it's knowing through experience the infinite within you. And so I'm aware that I haven't had that, ex well, maybe I've had actually little tastes of it. And we all have at different moments, we've had little tastes of timelessness and like perfection and harmony and synchronicity, right? And then th th those things go away and you're like, damn, you know? But there, I believe, it seems to me that you could surrender deeply into the divine consciousness, into the divine intelligence, which you learn through fasting. And that's the ultimate medicine. We kind of jumped, we went from, are you, do you want to do it to, you know, you're enlightened. So we miss, we'll get the stuff in the middle if you want, but I'm DTM and it does what it does. So I apologize. It does what no, it does. I, it's I, awesome. I, it's awesome. MP, did you have any uh, questions come in mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a lot. <laughs> um, I sort of have like, it's just a, a two in one question here. Um, so if we're talking about, uh, um, I have like a baseline of health. Uh, now, what are some issues that you see people come in with that, can be fixed like sort of quickly, but then I, I know that obviously there's like more longer term issues, issues that need time. But like, if you could just go over um, like some of those issues that you know uh, can be fixed pretty easily. Um, even if it's like, even if it's like constipation or um, maybe like people getting like headaches or migraines and stuff. Um, just like, just yeah. stuff like that, you know, uh, okay. like, it, like, like with, with your experience, uh, like what, like what issues have you have you really seen? Um, and the second question, uh, I'll just go with that one first, actually. One at a time. <laughs> one at a time. I am DTF. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't overwork my one brain cell that I got left. <laughs> so um, th that's that's where we start. So I'm sorry everyone for taking thirty minutes and trying to make you get enlightened. Um, <laughs> Cheers. No, it's awesome. That's that's what I'm. That's just I'm I'm obsessed. I'm, right. I'm obsessed with God. I'm going to cram it down your throat. <laughs> the damn door, you know? No, but um, because I think that's the ultimate answer. But and then it makes the rest of this kind of easy. But the main thing is the gut. 
It's just the food is not food. Mm -hmm. It is atrocious and it is going to disorganize your gastrointestinal tract, disrupt your microbiome, and then you're going to have fuzzy, foggy, clouded, constipated um, lethargy. Mm -hmm. So the first step is, okay, I have a gut. I have mis I have been abusing it, you know, because McDonald's, you know, there's nothing wrong with any food, but layer after layer after layer of mucus builds up, inhibits utilization, and starts building those biofilms, and then it starts to, um, you know, inhibit utilization of nutrition. If there really is such a thing, we're still on the fence about that, but Ultimately, what I've seen is that it's the invisible electricity in the food that actually feeds the human organism. Um, so it's kind of like the, the health is already there mm -hmm. as the uh, like power or the infinite field of electricity that we plug into through like breath and through just um, mostly through the breath. That's the breath or air or oxygen is kind of the number one nutrient that humans live off of. But then we pick up a lot of energy from the sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, we pick up a lot of different energies from the harmonics of like, you know, New York City, it feels a hell of a lot different than the middle of the Redwoods in California right. by a river. Your, your whole system, the, um, you know, the, you know, just your, olfactory, your sensory, the auditory. I mean, just the sounds make a big difference on your nervous system and your health. So mm -hmm. awareness again is the key. But when we start with the basics, we're really wanting to get the gut regenerated and it can take a couple of years. And that's why I hit those protocols all the time and plug the pyridime like there's no tomorrow because it did take me several years to figure out hey ding dong pyridime is the gut regeneration company because mm -hmm. if you look at everything that they've got it all regenerates the gut mm -hmm. which is the hub of the physical organism and of course with the gut brain axis what you eat the food essence is what becomes the thought essence mm -hmm. So you're, if you eat cheeseburgers and ice cream and donuts, you're probably going to have different mental essence um, on a continual and regular basis than somebody who eats apples, bananas, and lettuce. So, and, and because those are going to be a different level of um, harmony, geometric, uh, you know, just like frequencies. So when we cook or process, we deharmonize and fragment. And so you're just eating disharmony. And then the body's like, okay, we'll try to do the best we can with this. It's going to take a lot of work, a lot of energy, a lot of vital force. It's going to be clogging up. The microbes are going to be a lot different with the processed food and the denatured food and the cooked food than the fresh, whole, organic uh, wholesome, natural, plain foods of the various types, mm -hmm. um, including the animal products as well, you know, because we have had millions of years of biological evolution with the animal products. And so they're even less detrimental. And of course, the vegans, their, their panties go up their backside really far. And you can hear them screaming from 100 miles away, like that one lady with the glasses when Trump won the election. <laughs> 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 But I have a lot of carnivore friends and a lot of people that are all trying every little thing and whatnot. Right. So I can say my way is the one right way because that's just ignorant and stupid. Yeah. But what I try to tell people, because they're like, no, as long as it's vegan, it can be as processed as hell. Bill Gates grown in a laboratory on baby fetuses, yeah. you know, plastic put into it. As long as it's vegan plastic, I'll eat it. You know, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Hold on a second here put away the beyond burgers and go get, you know, go get a, some black beans or something and make a black bean burger or right. whatever. But the, it's the real foods that are the least harmful. And it's mm -hmm. the processed junk, which is 
I'm estimating, I don't know, you guys can tell me or not, but 90% probably of food that's consumed is, is disorganized, restaurant, industrialized, corporatized, you know, Frankenstein food, yeah. right? Is that yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like everyone's so fast paced and they don't even know what to do or what to eat. So they just grab and go, oh, Wendy's, McDonald's, KFC. It's, it's easy. You know, guys go to work. They don't want to prep food or anything. What do they do? They go to a local sandwich shop and get a cheesesteak with fries, you know, and they do that every day. And it's like, like right. <laughs> that's fine for a while, but that waxy mucus, those cheesy, fake chemical right. preservatives and stuff on those foods, the restaurant foods are low quality. Right. If you go to the farmer's market, if you go and grow your own, that's the best. Go mm-hmm. to the farmer's market or the produce department and get the organics you're you're doing get your own food and go home and make it right minimally process it because the restaurants and the corporations their profit right so you got the burger 10 years later it hasn't changed and you could probably (laughs) eat that mcdonald's burger and get the same amount of nutrition that you would have got 10 years earlier before it sat there with all those plastic um and that's why human beings are kind of becoming sort of pickled plastic artificial where they're like living in alignment with like the media and so that's why you can pull the wool over their eyes because they've stepped out of that organic process of consciousness Mm -hmm. they're like plastic thoughts and plastic bodies and plastic people so when they put the plastic media up they're like oh of course you know of course, that's the truth. I'll do whatever you say. And I love these three letter agencies, the FDA, they care so deeply, you know, so when you're an awake and you're an organic dude, you're like, hold on a minute here. You want to inject me with what, you know, <laughs> I'm going to do a little research here, you know, right. and then you find out like, I'm glad I made it through that, you know, unscathed. Yeah. Yeah. So got it. I was just going to say, Dan, so a lot of people don't really understand what true gut health would look like. And I feel as though you probably know better than anyone. So uh, what to you, what would you consider having, what would you consider to have like a healthy gut? Like if you were to talk to someone and they said, I want, I go to bathroom once a day, but you know, I eat three times a day. That's probably not a good sign for you. When you discuss health with someone, especially gut health, what are you looking for in the feedback that they're giving you to know that they actually are functioning properly? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, bowel movements for sure, uh, brain fog, mental clarity. Um, so, you know, you can't really say because it's really diversified. Some days you'll have three bowel movements and three meals, and some days you'll have nice one big gnarly just champion, like where you want to leave it in there for a while and just show somebody. <laughs> right? Like, but <laughs> like when I do, I'll, I'll like triple dose on the cleanse and just have like, it'll just be like, I'll just be like yeah. and that's pretty much it for the day, you know? Yeah. So you can't really say, you know, um, I, I, I mean, when you, here's the thing actually, that when you are fasting, when you get done fasting and your gut is in really, really good health, you do notice that eat and poop. It really does get like that, but you, you can, but it is very, very difficult to stay in that state. Right. And until you get, you kind of want to get a little bit beat up to where it's like your gut is like ready for anything. Like you could fast a few days or you could pig out for a few days, you know, or you can eat one big meal and go out for hiking for a few days. I mean, you want to have some, you know, robustness and diversity. Yeah. You don't want to be this little person that's like has to have five meals a day or, you know, and you're weak. Well, you want to be able to, you know, really have that range of being able to be flexible. Yeah. Yeah. The, the reason I asked is because I feel as though gut health has almost become like a buzzword where people are like, hey, if you fast on coffee all day, it's really good for your gut health. Or if you take a probiotic from your local Walmart, like that's, you know, gut health. Yeah. But I feel as though the understanding that you have of like true gut health or raising like super kids, as you call it, is obviously a step above. And people actually, I don't even feel like they realize how much better their gut could feel. Yeah, uh, that's. 
I mean, dude, digestion, utilization, assimilation, and elimination. You know, and when you're running on all eight cylinders with your gut, you'll know it. Because, I mean, I have very good gut health. That's my strongest uh, suit. That's my greatest kind of gift that I've given to myself where I've learned, you know, um, that's kind of, because I've got, I'm an expert in it for myself because I went to the hospital and they almost killed me with antibiotics. I got food poisoning at the Woodstock Fruit Festival and then had to go to the um, emergency room. Yeah, well, they put the, they have the, the newbie chefs and then they throw some kind of rotten thing in there and then it sits on the floor all day at room temperature. Oh. Then the whole salad dressing goes off. Because if you're a chef like me, you check every little thing, you know, yeah. you're a master, you know? Right. If you're a newbie chef, you're like, oh, this zucchini's fine, just a little bit of weird stuff, right? But it's actually really bad because at room temperature for four hours, a big vat of that stuff made for a hundred people, mm -hmm. it's going to go off and then you're going to get sick. So that's what happened. And, and my immune system was really low from all the stuff I was going through with the breakup, the stalker and the vegans and the vegans hate it when I say that, but it was one of the most traumatic experiences. So vegans, if you want to move your cause forward, be kind, not only to yeah. animals, but to people too, because they're all struggling too. Right. You know? Right. If people are struggling. They've got six foot worms in their gut. They don't know why they only want to eat meat and nothing else. Right. And then other people do it conscientiously and they feel better because a lot of the plant-based crap is really bad for you. They're like eating bags of nuts. Like, and, oh, you didn't soak those? No, I didn't soak them. That's why I feel like crap. You know, you got to learn how to, you know, you got to learn to mimic nature. We forgot nature, mm -hmm. you know? So... Yeah, going off the the gut message here, um, and speaking of juicing too, so I actually went 38 days just on celery juice in the morning. Um, I, I mean, I've done juice fast in the past and whatnot, um, but I, I was like kind of like on the celery juice kick, and I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. So I did 38 days just in the morning of celery juice, um, 32 ounces, and I swear on like day four to six, I'm not kidding, I had like 25 bowel movements, like <laughs> just like just from those three days alone. And then like it's sort of uh, normalized out over the next couple of weeks and, and whatnot. Um, but I swear, like even just that gave me like a sort of internal cleansing and really clean me out. Now I know for myself, like I, I really do believe cool, like wholeheartedly in juicing and I, and I, I, I love juicing and I feel so good when I drink juice. Um, for me, sometimes though, I feel it's, it's not sustainable just because of just my lifestyle that I'm living and work and just all, all the stuff that that's, that's, that's been going on with my life. Now, what would you have to say to someone, um, like, like myself, you know, I'm not, that's not that I'm struggling, but like, I, I want a juice, but maybe, um, I just don't prioritize it. So like, how, how can you tell someone like me that, uh, like how to make it sustainable, if that makes sense, you know, just because, like, cause like even still, like when I'm busy and stuff, like those, those denser meals feel better on the body, you know, other than like just being so high from like all the work and stuff and haven't, haven't been eaten all day, you know? So, um, that's why like, I like coming home and making like a denser meal, if that makes sense, you know? So, but like, I, I want to, I still want to juice though too, you know? So, um, yeah, not sure if, uh, I would love, would love to hear your thoughts on, on that. So to make it sustainable, you know, if there's a way to do that or a mindset around it. Uh, okay. Well, the denser meal is awesome because we do work hard and it's a reward kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And also you're just buzzing, you know, and you got to kind of stop buzzing unless you, if, if you find something you really love, you don't stop buzzing. Yeah. You, you drink some juice, you sleep for three hours and you get back up and you start painting again or you start working on that song, or you start working on your uh, spiritual book, or, you know, if, if you find something, or you're writing emails to feed hungry African children, you know, and it's like your thing, and you like, you know, if, when, if you're really into something, most of us don't stay in that phase for too long, mm -hmm. but that's, you know, if there's, if you really have something, then you barely need to eat. It's kind of like being in love, you're like, I don't need to eat. I don't need to sleep. You know, when you first fall in love or something or whatever, and that wears off too. It all, all wears off. And so life is such an amazing journey, but juicing is a, is a good thing that you ask because it's where I start everyone. 
Mm -hmm. It's the beginning and the end, really. But it's where you start everyone, the daily juicing habit. Mm -hmm. uh, you just get, the, you just like, look, you're out of shape, you're messed up, you're sick. You can't overload someone and try to teach them like 30 years of juicing every day and 22 years of live foods and fasting experience in one sit down, in one consult. So you're just like, listen, do you have a juicer? Yes, it's in the garage. Okay, go get it and dust it off and put it on the counter. And this is what you need to do. Use it every day. Drink at least 32 ounces of your fit, whatever juice, any juice, fruit, vegetable, whatever. Just get in the habit of doing that every single day. And it will begin the process of the flushing, like you said, and the feeding and the nourishing and the hydrating and the awakening. You'll start bringing in life force. Right. You'll start to wake everything up. Now that's step one. If you want to go deeper, of course, you do another one of those and then the salad, you know, and then you have fruit for snacks. It's not that hard. This is kind of like the living foods lifestyle. And as you get more mature, you need less food. As the food becomes more nourishing and nutritive, you need less food. As your absorption is better, as your dopamine is better, as your lifestyle is better, as you don't waste as much energy in, with your brain, because your brain uses up a lot of fuel, as you learn to be more um, efficient in your life, like I don't do drama, you know, if you can be like a, like me, like I don't do drama, have a nice day. Well, wait a minute, don't you want to fight? No, thank you. I just, <laughs> God bless you, peace. Like, but if you wanted, if you were a drama queen or drama king, you'd be burning up a lot of energy and you'd need to eat more cheeseburgers, you know, to keep all that drama in your life going. Yeah, right. So the more efficient you become with your sleep and your lifestyle and your just your efficiency with no drama and like learning how to master your energies, you need less food. But the daily juicing habit is where I pretty much start everyone just because that's where it all started for me 30 years ago. Parents bought me a juicer and I've been juicing every day since. Wow. So I live off the juice. And that's why my gut just doesn't, you know, I've had trouble in the past too many unsoaked nuts in the beginning and God knows what else, everything else. I've gone off the rails, 24 Reese's peanut butter cups. I mean, you know, the whole thing, I've done it all. Things that you don't even want to know about. Trust me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stacks of pancakes with butter and maple syrup until I'm just in a, like a coma. You right. Know? Nothing solves problems like a stack of flapjacks with <laughs> high fructose corn syrup, maple syrup, and butter. You'll just be like, well, <laughs> Not that bad. <laughs> Those are the sugar rushes or anything. Right. Just take all the vital force out of the brain and put the vital force, the nerve energy down into the gut. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. But if, you, if you're tough, the nerve force can grow and grow and grow and grow and you can handle more and more and it just starts popping up all this, all your issues and all your blockages and you know, but for most of us, we're like, this is uncomfortable. I just don't want to, I don't want to talk to my wife. So I'm just going to eat more. And then 12 years later, you haven't had that conversation with your wife yet. Mm -hmm. That's the average person in our world with drinking drugs, food, uh, adrenaline, social media, entertainment, the whole nine yards. But to make it sustainable though, the thing is, it's like, dude, I have traveled everywhere. And I'm telling you, like, uh, before I get on the plane, I'm drinking like a gallon of juice. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting up to pee a lot the for the first half the plane ride. But dude, I'm hydrated. I'm motivated because I'm is. hydrated before I get on that plane. The plane will suck you dry. Mm -hmm. So I drink, a, a, I mean, I make juice before I night before I get on the plane. Okay. I got a cooler everywhere I go. There's a cooler. Everybody that wants to eat better and have a healthy life needs a cooler you know, and then you need to learn how should I make my juice the night before or do I make it the morning? Uh, exactly. And that's a perfect size for two juices, <laughs> and grapes, four apples, a little raisin thing and a little jar of water, whatever you, a nice cooler. Right. And you take ice blocks from plastic water bottles and you freeze those. That way you're not wasting your money on ice and you just keep recycling the same water bottle in the freezer every night. Then every day, however you do it, you've got your cooler full of real food because there's no real food in the world. 
you might not be able to swing by the grocery store and grab some bananas. You need to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. You're going to eat real food. You're going to go to the store and buy it yourself. You're going to go to the farmer's market and buy it yourself. You can't go to a restaurant. You eat at Subway. Half the food is sort of real-ish, almost, the iceberg lettuce, but it's still been sprayed with something. The tomatoes, they're like, oh, these red things, they're round, there's some water in there, there isn't any flavor, but they have something sprayed on them too. The yeah. meat has something sprayed on it. The cheese is God knows what, like plastic. Here's this plastic Subway cheese. It's delicious. The bread, who knows what they put in that? It's Subway, right? Jared lost weight. Yeah, well, he would also <laughs> have to turn out to be <laughs> a weirdo, you know? And so, not too good for Subway, right? You guys talk about, that's why I just, I almost said the word, but right now that's a red flag because they're really trying to take over the world, like Disney, you know? Everybody, <laughs> it's like, no thanks. You can keep all that woke crap. The woke is coming up. It's like basically the parasites on earth are dying because the light is growing because we've got the information age. People can look it up. They're like, what does aluminum do to your brain? <laughs> oh, and you want to put it in there? I don't want to have it in there. You know, it's like, and so the world is waking up. Whereas in the 90s, we didn't really have that. They were like, oh, okay, just put inject it, whatever. You're the doctor, go ahead. You know, now people are like, hold on a minute, mercury, aluminum, formaldehyde. You know, and then so the world's waking up, you know, and so as the light grows and everybody becomes more conscious because it's the information age, too much information now, but it, now everyone was waking up. And so the parasites are giving their one last hurrah on earth, you know, to because they want to kill you if they can't, you know, if they can't be in control the parasitic energy, same thing with like a man controlling a woman or a woman controlling a man or a boss controlling his employees or the globalists controlling the little minions, the little peons, you know, they want control, control, you know, and they don't have any self-control. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when you are your own master, you have enough work to do right here, but right. they're not that aware yet. So they have, the <clears throat> so the parasites, when they're dying, when you're growing the light in you and they have one last hurrah, they're spitting out massive amounts of chemicals to get you to try to feed us. We want our tribute, what, whatever it is, whether it's animal-based parasites, whether it's carbohydrate process-based sugar parasites and yeasts or whatever it is, as they're dying off, they spray one last chemical infusion into your bloodstream and they're like, give us our tribute. And you're like, you're sweating bullets. And you're like, I want a fucking candy bar, you know, <laughs> or, whatever, or I just want a cheeseburger, you know, and sweating bullets. But DTM, he's got me on this health program. I got to get rid of this cancer. And you're sweating bullets and you like can get through it. You got to be, you got to outsmart the parasites. Just like humanity, we will outsmart the parasites that are mm -hmm. trying to control us. Mm -hmm. So as you're yeah. in your gut, remember that. It's happening mm -hmm. globally and it's happening individually. Mm -hmm. So as you're cleaning out your gut and changing the ecosystem, your whole mind is going to change. I mean, you can get into a really happy paradise state of wellness, abundance. Mm -hmm. The media is like, it's the end of the world. And, and also like, you know, Mike Adams, it's the end of the world. And Alex Jones, it's the end of the world. And it's like, it's true, you know, it, partially. But also there's these other layers of frequency that we can tap into to where it's like, okay, it's been the end of the world for thousands of years now. And here we are. It's like, you might want to pay your phone bill. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's probably going to keep going, you know, <laughs> the people are just getting up. They're loving their children. They're going to work. They're selling their wares and we're creating a demand and that demand will be met, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I don't even know. Oh, juicing, practicality, yeah. cooler. Get the cooler. Yeah, the baby. There because I've gone all over the place. I, dude, I, here's where no one has any excuses. I rode across the US from uh, LA to New York. By the time I got to Ohio, I dumped all the camping gear and just got a juicer and schlepping an Omega juicer. I juiced all the way from Ohio to New York on just juice with no cooler, with just a big back 
pack, uh, uh, one of those black bags that had this extent there thing. I could fit five jars of juice. And then I just kept throwing ice on top of it. And it was carrot juice or apple juice or orange juice. And I would just drink one mono juice throughout the day mm -hmm. and rode all the way from Ohio to New York, stopping at a motel room, grabbing produce, spending an hour or two juicing it, bottling it up, putting it in the fridge, putting it on my backpack at three or four or five in the morning, taking off and riding another hundred miles on five jars of juice. Wow. wow. That's unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> so this is a perfect... So this is a perfect transition for people who maybe they don't have cancer or maybe they don't have some serious de detrimental health issue, but clearly they've suffered from some health challenges. They want to be fit and they want to be healthy. Now, a lot of people are going to say you need to eat a shit ton of calories. You need to wake up, have 2000 calories for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know that you don't subscribe to that DTM. What would you say to, can someone be a raw or living food person and be an athlete? Can they, can they be on the bike and can they run? Can they build muscle? Or is they always just going to have like kind of that floppy, weak, pale kind of look? Do you have advice for people who want to be strong and healthy and fit? And can it be done? It can most certainly be done. Generally, what you'll find with the living foods is more of a healing and more of an energy. So remember, energy is different than calories. I mean, there's calories in a piece of cedar. You know, there's calories in a, uh, I mean, what else? Like a, a sponge has calories, you know, but you're not going to get much energy from it, you know? So the calorie model is 1792, you know, French uh, scientist, you know, so that's like a little outdated. Energy is, so the energy comes from the removal of the obstruction because the power is there. The, where does the electricity come from? It's already there in the wall, you know? And it's it's via just the field, you know? So what happens is, is that flows through you, the divine intelligence, but the more blocked up you are, the harder it is, the more the energy is grinding up against the resistance of the residues and the waste matter, creating heat, friction, inflammation, and blocking the conductivity of the electricity of your being. So, um, you know, I'm drawn more to uh, just that energy, electricity, and consciousness. So I can't really speak so much. I mean, my joints are good uh, after all these years on the living foods. I have pretty decent energy on the bike. You know, my cardio is decent. Um, I'm pretty strong in the gym, but I've been through a lot too. And, and that's the thing to remember. Everyone's been through a lot. Everyone has different bones. Everyone has different joints. Everyone has different musculature. Everyone has different genetics and mental state. So you have to decide what we do is we, the big guy. He's like me, big, you small regenerator. You need big cow balls to make big you. And I'm like, <laughs> But me like smart brain, you no brain smart, you know? And they, so you gotta be big like me. I'm really big. Can you put your pants on? Me can't climb flight of stairs, but have big muscle. <laughs> fun of them, but they're always making fun of me because they're, um, cause I'm thin yeah. and I'm talking about like, eat your vegetables, you know? And then they're like, I effing hate you. Eat some, you know, something. Eat yeah, something. right bacon is a superfood or whatever yeah. and i'm just like it's cool like i totally get it but then i can look in their eyes i can i go on facebook and they're like dan mcdonald you need to eat some cow parts or whatever some cow plus you know chicken feet so you can get some collagen you're too small and they're bigger but the look in their eyes tells me everything i don't want to be like you because you're only running on like four out of eight cylinders in your brain your body is big according to the uh, social conditioning yep. of a bigger body. And, mm -hmm. and there's ectomorphs, there's mesomorphs, there's endomorphs. The smartest among us realize that there's a huge variety of people and an mm -hmm. unlimited amount of priorities and concepts 
and uh, positionalities and um, hopes and dreams and visions, you know? And so we can't just say one or the other. I've leaned on the side of healing, you know, because people need that and, and energy. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I still go to the gym. I'm pretty strong. The thing, though, that I saw at the gym the other day, I try not to have too much of an ego about it, but it was kind of like, okay, I'm 48, but I'm glowing. I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm watching these other, these young women, you know, nice shapes, right? But they're, but they're not glowing. Mm. They're just, they're pale. They're not glowing with life. Mm -hmm. And I could see that they were, the, even the women were looking at me like, what is it with that guy? Why is he, you know, he's like got the grays and the beard and the wrinkles, but he's like glowing. And that's the glowing of the raw foods. Mm -hmm. That's the emanations of the life force energy because you're you're feeding yourself electricity and you're not wasting all your vital force on massive amounts of of cooked heavy foods that require massive amounts of energy to break down, right. utilize, and eliminate. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that glow is kind of what I like to have. Right. You know? Yeah. So while we're sort of on this topic here. Um, not only do I know the juice is great for regeneration and cleaning and whatnot, but would you also say that it's one of the best uh, ways for people who are plant-based or vegan to get nutrition? Uh, because even still, the other day I had a buddy and AJ and I talked about this. I have a friend who's like listening to Paul Saldino from, uh, you know, the carnivore dude. <laughs> I think he eats fruit now and stuff, but um He's like, oh, the soil is depleted, you know, uh, like people are only absorbing 20% of the plant foods they're eating. Uh, like it's dangerous to be a vegan nowadays. Like, would, would you definitely recommend like people who do, who do mainly eat plants to, to get, uh, not maybe not necessarily a bulk of their calories from juice, but to get like some juice in daily. And I, I know we always talk about the, the daily juicing habit. Uh, but getting that juice in just for the benefits of the nutrition of the vegetables and fruit and whatnot. Um, like, would you say that, that that's a really top notch source for um, especially a, a absorbable source of plant matter that vegans and plant-based people should be getting on a daily basis? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, first of all, <laughs> I love Paul. I think he's cool. I mean, I think, he's yeah, he's a good, he, he's a great guy. Yeah. He's cool. I mean, dude, you'd be surprised at the people I watch. And so, uh -huh. like, Dan McDonald, why are you so against me? It's like, I'm not. I just don't want to eat it myself. Yeah. I have nothing against anything. Come on over. I'll cook you a steak. <laughs> I studied the carnivores the last few years more than even any of the other vegan stuff because I just wanted to see. And I, I had all these friends and stuff. And then I've had friends that have gone way over to one side and then kind of came more back and. I had a friend that went carnivore for three months and he was raw vegan for 19 years and went carnivore for three months. And he's like, dude, I really, really stank bad. <laughs> so that's one of the downsides. Like I have haven't wore deodorant in 20 years, yeah. 20 years since I went raw, I haven't wore deodorant, you know, but I'm skinny. So maybe the girls that I like big guys, you know, <laughs> they're not going to be attracted to me. You know, there are other women that are like, you are my type. Let me sit upon it, you know? And then <laughs> everyone's got different, you know, tastes and flavors and everything else. And so, um, you know, it does appear that the animal flesh makes your muscles a little bit tighter. Yeah. I think because of not necessarily the protein, but maybe the acids left behind. So the muscles are tighter. Plus you have more of an animalistic body consciousness. Mm -hmm. So you're like, I'm going to work out and I'm going to build up my body because I am my body. But then when you're like a raw vegan fasting dude, you're like, I am not my body. I'm just in it right now. It's an <laughs> antenna to my real true self, which is the same infinite true self as the carnivore guy. It's just that I'm a little bit more tapped into it because my frequency and my thinness and my little yoginess is I'm just a more sensitive little antenna, which yeah. has its pros and cons, you know? Yeah, like if you if you had to go to war, it'd probably be a good idea to eat meat and steak so that you could have more of that like aggression and be able to <laughs> fight and kill, I would think. That's the other thing my buddy said when he went carnivore for three months. He was like, towards the end, I was so aggressive. 
And then now he's back to like 90% raw with a couple pieces of fish. And he's trying to justify this. And I'm like, dude, bro, that's awesome. You know, cause he's thinking we haven't talked in years and he's thinking, Oh, DTM. And I'm like, dude, I have no dude. I'm like, come on over. Yeah. I will show you how to make the perfect salmon. You know <laughs> I was a chef since I was four years old and could reach the stove. I make the best chicken stir fry in the world. And I have, I literally do not care what people eat. I have no judgment. There's no planet to save. There is no death in reality. Everything's just changing. Yeah. So it depends on your level of awareness and you're going to get attacked because the lower attacks, the higher, but as it gets higher, it goes, hmm, some of these crazy, but some of it makes sense. And it's like, at, at some point you realize that all concepts, all talking is all Maya, be silent and be the truth. Mm -hmm. And then you're coming across with the perfection. But until then, it's like you make the videos, you push the button, you talk. At the end of the month, you get a paycheck. So let's just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then there's just so, but the silence is the best. I, I can't, I took, made a video today. I'm like, I can't wait till I can dissolve into nothing. And yeah. then nobody. like, you, you want to be a nobody? I'm like, dude, being a nobody is the best because there's no pressure. Then you can eat what you want. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to talk a certain way. You don't have to dress a certain way. You can just be nothing. I'm unimportant. What I have to say is totally worthless. I don't even value my own opinions. May God just pour his blessings and grace upon you. You know, mm -hmm. like there's a whole nother level. All this is just like, I've gone nuts because I just totally saturate myself two to four to six hours a day of the teachers of enlightenment, the same ones over and over and over again. I've just brainwashed myself for self-realization because that's what makes the most sense to me. I'm not getting out of here with this thing. This thing will go back to the earth from whence it came. And right now I am called to just be a skinny little lightning rod toothpick <laughs> as I clean up all this wax and all these calcium deposits that I've had from years of drug abuse so if you don't mind, I'm going to detox myself to death because I'm in the middle of this process of getting, uh, I had, was born on drugs. Then I had massive side effects from the childhood um, schedule. And then I was a little pothead. And then I became smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol and getting blowjobs from the neighborhood girl. I mean, I was burning the candle at both ends and burning it right down the middle. I'm surprised I'm even standing here halfway as healthy as I am. You know what I mean? Right. And so I'm still on the path of regeneration of my brain, my nerves, these deposits. And I, I did it. And that might be my journey. I'm in the middle of it now, so I can't say anything conclusive. But I'm, I do feel better. I have really great energy. And um, I am a lot happier just the things that I'm doing to get my brain and nerves and dopamine and serotonin and my gut and my heart. It's like a whole project. I'm working on this thing. Mm -hmm. It's the meat suit that is like, I'm trying to turn the meat suit into a superconductor for God's energy. So it's at peace and it can just sit there and just instead of having to fight or defend or try to convince, I can just be like, hey, you know, God loves you. You are love. You are God. Let's all just relax and yeah. be at peace and allow ourselves because at the end of the day, you see that the universe is doing it. You're mm -hmm. not doing a damn thing. You, you are delusional. You think you are. You think you've done the bad. So you feel so guilty. You think you've done the good. So you get to take credit. But I guarantee you, my friend, the universe is doing it all. You're delusional, let go, let God, and it'll take you right where you need to go. Then you can quit judging others because they're on their little path and God is guiding them too, whether or not they're aware of it or not. And the more tapped in you get, the more you surrender, you're like, okay, just do whatever, man. I'm too tired. Mm -hmm. it, it wears me out. I get exhausted. So I'm just going to let you do it. If I eat, I eat. If I live in a cardboard box, if I get a nice blue truck or a pretty girlfriend, whatever you do it you're the one and that's your own inner being self 
source self. And that's why the fasting works. And that's why the surrender works. And that's why the meditation works. Because then you realize, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to surrender to God. I'm going to surrender to the universe. If it's an unpleasant day, it's God's fault. If it's a pleasant day, it's God's fault. And then I can just sit here peacefully being this peaceful, easy being that ends his own suffering at least, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. enter into the deathless state. So I don't know what the hell any of this has to do with raw foods, but I try my best. I can't stay on track. So, so <laughs> the average person comes to DTM, has a phone consult, says, yes, I want to live. You start them on the daily juicing habit. You talk about cleaning up their gut finding out if they're bloated or if they have like certain types of issues, like what's next? What from there do you also ask to try to navigate through their system to see where their weak links are, where the areas of improvement are for a person who's just wants to get overall healthier? Are there general principles to kind of look at and follow? Yes. So when people call me for consults, I'm actually more sane than I am during the videos. During the videos, <laughs> I know there's like hundreds or even thousands of people watching. And that, that affects the whole thing. So that affects what comes through. When there's one person on the other line, I had a consult with the, one of the elite video club members and she's a sweetheart. She's coming to the um, uh, elite. She's coming to the family reunion. Mm, nice. And, um, you know, she just had, I could just feel it right away. I could feel her, I could feel the anxiety and the fear. I could feel her throat chakra. I mean, this is within a, two seconds. And we had done one a couple of years ago too. And it all comes flushing back. It's a trip. And so, you know, but I was, I could feel her throat chakra was blocked and I could feel her heart chakra was a little anxious. And then as it went on, I could feel her sense of her power solar plexus was a little bit low, but you know, I could feel that. And so I go into, you know, what that person needs. And I'm actually really good at it. I mean, you do something for thousands of times and if you care and you have a lot of experience um everyone is so different it's amazing that's why the consults are so interesting to me because it really the videos are like the rantings of a madman talking to a thousand different people from all different walks of life and so it just comes through like that but when there's a consult i know i i have one hour to find uh, the two or three things where it's, and it's very rarely ever about the food. We all have these problems, but it's all the same. We have to stop avoiding the unpleasant. We have to learn to face the unpleasant. We have to embrace the guilt, the shame, the fear, the anxiety, and also the anxiety, which does come from identification with the body, with the mind, with the story. The more we can focus on you know, the eternal nature of our being. Oh, you mean I'm just a human being and this thing's going to last about whatever, 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe 100 years if I'm lucky. Yeah, that's it. And then it's going to go back down into the ground. It's no big deal. But you are unaffected the whole time. So find that part of you which does not change, which was here prior to birth and will be here after death. So, you know, the, 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 the health is pretty pretty easy for the individual person but it's always why are you hurting yourself why are you anxious why don't you love yourself you know why did you just you know get married to a new husband and then go off the rails you were on point you were on point you had your health you were on the raw foods doing the right thing you married somebody and then you went off the rails you got a lesson to learn you can't just let you know, but it does though. I've been in relationships too. She's like, oh, look, at these. I'm from Belgium. We need potatoes to be healthy. You know, I'm like, well, then maybe I do too. Can I have some of those? You know, when I'm here in my little yogi apartment, it's like, it's just all raw food. There isn't even a pot or pan. The stove's never been used, you know? So it's just kind of, it's, you know, and everyone's got their different challenges and stuff and their environment and their, you know, what they need to do. But would you say it's important the people you surround yourself with that influence you is important to pick who's actually around you because they're going to probably affect how you live? Most certainly. The field trumps all. You've got the overall field of 
of the universe. Then you've got the overall field of Earth. Then you got the overall field of the collective of humanity. Then you've got um, you know the over, the field of your um, country. Then you've got the field of your um, state. Then you've got the field of your county. Then your neighborhood. Then your household. It's like holy crap. So that's why you got to get you got to brainwash yourself. Whatever it is you want to be or learn or do. This guy's eating that. They're eating that. If you want to eat a certain way and it resonates with you, you want to do this thing, you got to brainwash yourself. That's why you got to get the DTM $97 birthday bash full tuition sale and then brainwash yourself with hella audios and watch all the videos. And that way it, it goes into your brain. Then you practice it. Then you embody it. Then you become it. But you're still affected by the field. And so you don't take anything too personally, um, but then what you try to do is you try to create, the, do the best you can to create an external environment, but the most important environment, because you can be a yogi and you can just go tropping off into the forest and bring all the lust with you. So wherever you go, there you are with all your pros and cons, and that's why it doesn't even matter. That's why the greatest teachers are not like, you don't need to go to an ashram. You don't need to go to the forest. Right now, right where you are is the best place to start, you know? And, and if you eventually automatically find yourself at the ashram or the forest due to the nature of your changing of the internal, but changing the external doesn't begin the process of changing the internal. And so everything is internal, really, man, internal energy management of consciousness and awareness. And that then you, no matter where you go, I mean, the best thing to do is to be like a chameleon. You can go here, and, 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 but you don't, need to, you don't need to eat the chicken stir fry that you make for your family. You just make it, and you know you're going to have your salad. They know you're going to have your salad. It's no problem. You've already argued a million times, you know. Where do you get your protein? Are you sure I can't make you a sandwich? Your grandma, you know, 10 years later, are you, are you sure I can't make you a sandwich, Danny? You know, it's like, grandma, you don't even try it because your grandma, you only eat fruits and vegetables? I, I how do you, I, what's, I mean, are you sure you don't want some of my deviled eggs? I'm like, grandma, I love your deviled eggs. I miss them like crazy, but not today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, it, it, it goes on and on and on, but you know, this, this one, this is it right here. And you got to decide like, and everyone's got their identity and they're like, I'm a raw vegan. And then they're on the internet and I'm a raw vegan and that's how you live or whatever. And then other people, they want to identify with all kinds of different stuff, you know, and then we get kind of, we're just that, you know, and it's, as you expand, you really want to let go and it's, it can be tough, you know, mm -hmm. and I know that I'm, doing this now. it's it's doing it now because it wants me to do this but someday it's going to blow the lid off this thing and i'm just going to be a, a lot more of a different person but the healing is all the same you know and that is the healing is from the ultimate medicine which is basically operating 24 7 365 uh all day all night every day all day from birth until death. It's always trying to work in your favor. The, the infinite field of divine consciousness is always plotting to raise you up and lift you up to bring you to the heavenly realms. It's already there in you. It's just trying to get you to wake up to get all the debris and the addictions and the habits and the obstructions on every level. Physical obstructions, too much fat, too much fried food, too many donuts, too many candy bars, too many big giant buckets of however many 64 ounces of soda, energy drinks, cocaine, I mean, deep fried, God knows what, everything blocking up the flow of the blood, the nerve and the lymph. That's the physical organism. How's the heart? Have you, do you cultivate love for yourself? And do you allow love to come in and out of you? Easier said than done. Some of us have really ossified hearts, but 
and and sometimes love is like a thought in the mind but as you you know commit to love mentally and to make them like ask yourself is this the loving thing to do you know what okay just let her keep the juicer and the vitamix i'll get a new one i'm sorry we had to break up you're the most beautiful thing ever but i've got to go this other way you don't split hairs and be small you make the loving choice but then soon you start dropping down into the heart as you quiet the mind and don't even believe your own beliefs anymore and you're like oh it's all an illusion so to go down into the real power generator the real um guidance system is the heart you know and love can't be proven either way you can't prove scientifically that you love your mom so the people they're stuck in their head but there are people that go to the fifth dimension where the love starts that's where you really start to have a better life more energy when the heart is just more open you're, you're forgiving you forgive everyone you forgive yourself for some people it's easy to forgive yourself like i'm you know the shit and i never did anything wrong and then it's all these idiots and i can't believe uncle harry stole my lawnmower 12 years ago and whatever but that guy he uh you know lied to me and then had sex with my sister you know and it's like you're still mad 12 years later it's like like get over it honey everybody just get over it right forgive everyone we're all fucked up you know <laughs> Excuse my language. I'm trying to stop swearing. So I can't no, we love the swearing. <laughs> Sometimes there's only one word for it, like get over it. And I'm talking to myself. I'm never talking to anyone. I'm talking to myself all the time. Yeah. Reminding myself of what's important. So hopefully some of the linear data came through today. It's so easy. Drink your juice, damn it. And don't love it. dare resist what I'm telling you. No. <laughs> <laughs> juice eat some fruit get a colonic i mean it's very 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 simple because mm -hmm. it actually happens on its own when you get out of the way that's why fasting you go somewhere you rest the blood pumps the the divine energy field it's there keeping you alive it pumps through it cleans you out and then all the obstructions are removed all these old memories get washed away all the old stagnant emotions that's the ultimate example of how this works. When you water fast, the physical obstructions are removed. You see things and smell things. You're like, holy shit, that is a cheeseburger that I ate in 1983 that just came out of me. <laughs> now I feel a lot better. All the drugs, they'll come out of your brain. They'll come out of your lungs. I mean, I've watched this and it, it's a system. I've done 21, 28, and 40 day water fasts. And I've seen the physical obstructions removed and my joints turn into that of like a three-year-old girl where I'm on the floor in a full Lotus, you know, and I'm just able like your joints just become like rubber and your tissues are just like, you can bend over and like put your head on the ground, you know? And, and then as you start eating again, you're like, Oh, I don't have, I'm not as flexible as I was. Right. Cause the re residues build up again in the physical organism. But when you fast, the physical organism is cleansed. The mental organism, your, the blood starts pumping into these watershed areas and cleaning out your pineal gland and cleaning out old dead neurons of these pathways of like, um, I had all these resentments against these people. And as I was on my 40 day water fast, these, the neurons were getting clean and I would have dreams about these people that were pleasant. Whereas I had all these unpleasant um, resentments and I could see them coming up. I was resentment against certain people. I won't say who they were or whatever, but as I was fasting, the brain cleansed all that out of there for me. And then the emotions, oh, you're just like, all the old like self-hatred and stagnant emotions. And it's a lot easier to love after a 40 day water fast. And then of course you start eating again and building up but i i those all those memories that got cleansed out uh were are permanently gone and they've never come back and i stopped for, you know um obsessing about these people you know <laughs> i'll give one example one of them was durian writer you know because i was like i liked him and i thought we were friends and then all of a sudden it's like as far as our career goes it's like must destroy other person to make bigger me, you know? 
and then it was just all the vegans and I call them the hordak of mindless minions of durian rider attacking me on my channel I just couldn't handle it and so that was one of the hard, hardest most challenging experiences because I was hurt because I I still like durian rider you know yeah. I see good in him I don't know what he's doing these days I don't see anyone anymore it's all just propaganda now you got to dig and find your old friends like, oh I forgot you even existed you know they don't sugar have and white rice <laughs> But that was one of the things it was during writer and I had this dream and we were in this van and we were like eating fruit or something and making up and being friends again. And ever since then I could quit having the obsession of, I hope he fails, you know, like, cause I didn't want to be a dick either. I don't want to be a dick. Yeah. You know, I want to everyone to succeed, you know? Yeah. And so that was just one example. And that's kind of, that's the fasting, cleansing, healing process. Everyone can get on, not every, everyone's like raw vegan, you're insane, vegetables, fruit. Ah, oh, you're gonna die, your teeth are gonna fall, your dick's gonna fall off, you know, and all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, I'm 48 and I'm telling you what, I don't, I go to bed with a heart on and I wake up with one, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> there's no problem there. Green juice yeah. is the ultimate Viag natural Viagra for sure. The circulation is good and the hormones are good. And so I'm telling you, man, it's like, that's like my biggest obsession is like still at this age you guys are still young i know your brains i know where they're at about 23 hours a day <laughs> put it in go in and out <laughs> <laughs> 23 and a half hours now yeah. it's calmed down a little bit you guys know what i'm talking about too yeah baby you guys do. Like that's what do we are propagators that's what the human body is it is a you know, it's more than that, but it's basically what's the whole thing really designed for, you know, to testicles, penis, goes into the vagina, shoots a load, nine months later, there's a baby, boom, I have done my job, right? The more you have sex, the faster this thing wears out, as far as um, the men, with the women, the more children you have, the faster the thing wears out. So we sacrifice our body for the future generation. Same thing with all plants, flowers, trees, everything, the whole thing. That's nature, you know? So the less sex you have, the longer you'll last because nature wants to, to uh, you know, have your procreation. So you got to make choices. It's like, let's see, should I, should I go Dan Blazarian style and have sex with four women a night for five years and then die of a heart attack at like 52? Or should I, you know, have one girlfriend and make love to her once a month and preserve my life force and live a long life and make a lot of videos and save a lot of lives. You know, what do you, what do you want to do? Who's right? Who's wrong? Let's judge each other until we're all so pissed off. Right. Right. Let's fight. No, man, everybody. I'm just like, yo, man, I'll help you if I can. I know I'm crazier than a god dang loon, but I'm also, I have also a lot of like, I've been through a lot and it's the suffering and the pain that I've been through, it's like, you can be a drug addict and poor and you can get sober and you can be abundant. You know, I can tell you that right now. And you can, you're 48 and you actually feel, can feel pretty good. And you don't have to be fat and you don't have to have any diseases. You don't have to be on any drugs and you can wake up and go to sleep with a heart on and you can make love for hours at a time if you want to. You know, I'm just saying, you don't have to be like the sterilized zombie eating plastic foods you yeah. can't have other choices and i'm not better than any of you i'm the same as all of you there's only just one great good god and if it would just use me that's all i'm asking for is for the great god to <clears throat> use this dude and give him as much peace and ease as possible and take me as high up the mountain as possible in this lifetime and use me to be a light for no judgment and then try to share also some of the linear stuff too, but I'm really trying to get to the ultimate medicine. There's one problem and that's illusion. And there's one solution and that's the truth. And once you know the truth, you'll enter the deathless state. You'll be like, I'm an eternal being. And the, and the body's dying of cancer. And you're like, well, that's just the body. That's not me. I'm stoked out of my mind. This is amazing. I'm going to go get to go back home soon. It's no big deal. And they're like, oh, grandma, it's so sad. It's like, no, what is it? Dude, we should celebrate. Y'all motherfuckers better have a party when I die. He's Fuck free. Yeah. yeah, he's finally free. I mean, that was <laughs> hard, dude. This being yeah. human is not an easy thing. No, it's not. So we, we, we were like, oh, it's so sad. 
because we see it wrong. It's like, dude, they're free now. We're still stuck here. I mean, grandma's free. You know what I'm saying? She's up there crocheting in heaven. Right? She can eat as many cheeseburgers as she wants, drink as much gin and smoke cigarettes in the heavenly realm, and she won't have any health problems, right? They probably don't do that up there, but who knows? It's a blasphemy, Dan McDonald's. Like, well, have you been to heaven? Who knows what they do up there? Maybe Jesus is like tugging on a 22 eating Doritos, you know? Who knows? Who knows what's going on, man? Right. We'll yeah, find out when we get there, baby. Heaven is it. right here now, man. Dude, you got I'm some big energy. Crazy. Yeah. I'm going crazy, man. I, I love it. Something from this, or somebody got something because. I don't know if I'm crazy or what, but dude, it's just, that's the DTM. I'm done. It's fucking perfect. Yeah, that's it's great. great. It's awesome. And um, any last thoughts or yeah. do you guys have any uh, questions? Uh, I mean, honestly, I think that's a beautiful place to end right there. Um, yeah, this is oh, awesome. dude, I can go forever, but yeah, <laughs> good. we'll do this again. You guys are great hosts. I mean, I'm always the guy and then it starts coming and I apologize, <laughs> I apologize cause that's what got me here and that's what people like. So, and that's it. why we want you on for sure. Yeah. I get to be crazy and it hopefully helps people. <laughs> and it's fun. You guys see all the great space. Way this was a way cool interview. So and and I'm I do know how to teach in a linear way too. I mean, so let's let's cap it. The let's climb, let's let's cap the climbing of the mountain. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're unwell. Get the gut cleaned out. Get on the juicing, daily juicing habit. Get the Puridime and get your gut cleansed, healed, and regenerated. Take a colonic. Um, yoga, stretching, twisting. Yoga is great. Um, fitness, movement, oxygen, sunlight, okay? That begins the process. But just focus on really, really cleansing out your gut with the most simple, plain, basic foods. That'll take humility, you know? Eat like a peasant to become a king of the universe. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you eat clean and simple, plain food, your digestion will be good. Mono meals are the best. Liquids are fantastic to hydrate and flush the system. And then work on your mind. Learn how to focus. I know that's crazy. It's like the TikTok interview. I just made a video today. Hey, it's Dan. I got to learn how to make 30 second videos because everyone has the attention span of a gnat on crack. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on, I apologize. I didn't mean to say that. What I meant to say is that everyone has the attention span of a goldfish on meth, you know, and it was just a super funny little 26 second video. <clears throat> but while the world is going shorter and shorter attention span, I'm learning how to focus in the meditation. So learn how to focus, learn how to concentrate, find something that matters to you, that you can put your energy into that, you know, so that you can learn how to focus and concentrate once again in our super crazy modern flip through everything. You got to learn how to run a business and catch people's attention as they're scrolling through their dopamine rush. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but learn how to learn how to control the mind and learn how to master your thoughts and think powerful thoughts and just be ridiculous. I am beautiful. If, if you feel like you're not attractive, just say, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. And that inner voice will be like, no, you're not. Shut up, fatty. You're like, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I'm going to consciously, because you can eventually consciously override the unconscious. Allow the unconscious to come up and then consciously program, but allow the unconscious to surface and to be dissipated as well. But use your mantras, use your mind. I am beautiful. I am healthy. Speak it out to the universe. Say it to yourself. Reprogram. You know, I did that with money. And I'm just, I have a really good life. I'm not, I'm not going to go buy a super yacht or anything anytime soon, but hopefully I'm going to get me an ATV one of these days. If the sale goes well, <laughs> you know, I'm out in the desert. I went four by in for my first time yesterday in my life. I bought a four by four. And I've always wanted to go four by and I've never been in my life. And I'm out there just climbing these hills with too low in my new Tacoma. And I'm just like, oh, this is dope. And then I'm thinking, I got to get me a, uh, an ATV. You know, it's like, are you, aren't you a yogi? Aren't you ruining the planet? It's like, just hey, let me have some fun, damn it. Leave me alone. <laughs> And I'm going to bring my nine millimeter, by the way, too. So it's like, oh, I'm confused now. I want to put you in a fucking box. Well, don't. 
do not. And take yourself out of your own prison and diversify. Go roller skating. Roller skating, they haven't done that since the 80s. Exactly, man. Try something different. Do something else. Learn a new skill. Master the mind and you'll be much more happy than the heart. Forgive yourself. Forgive everyone else. Focus on love. Focus on feeling love. Embodying it. Make the loving choices because I'm a linear dude. But I, and so I was like, Robert Morse was like, be love. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean, be love? And then Dr. Hawkins was like, explained it mentally. How do we be love? And now with the help of Ramana Maharshi and Nisargadatta Maharaj, all this mental energy is going into the heart. And that's where I just want to sit in the cave of the heart silently. I'm hoping to retire-ish soon and like open a church and just be like, I'm going to be at the beach and then I can give away everything for free and I don't have to worry about money anymore. And if like someone brings me a cooked bowl of white rice, I'll, I'll get to eat the rice, you know, you know, and I can just stop trying so hard to be somebody. I'm just, I'm just holding it all together. Hi, it's Dan McDonald. I'm a, I got a corn cob up my ass. I'm so uptight. I'm sick of it. I <laughs> lose, you know, have a God named hot dog over the fire or something, you know, not really, but just, I, I joke around because you it's know, good. Yeah. It wouldn't be a hot dog, but I'm just saying, like, we got to relax. It's yeah, you got to so like it. I need to relax. I don't know if you do or not. <laughs> I need to let go and calm down and just be at ease. So, yeah. So, heal the gut, focus the mind, live in the heart. Nice. Love, love, serve. Try to find anything you can do. It's, it's hard because we all have to make a living and stuff. So, I took this thing that I loved that I did for all these years. And then I made a video and then it became this thing. And well, Krista was like, we need to, we can't pay the RV payments. We got to figure out something. And, and then I met Ricky and I had this, all this debt and everything. And it just was this money thing. So this thing that I loved and I'd love for it to be a service. It's kind of like, but I'm the one that has to manage all the money. And I'm like, hi, it's Dan. You better buy my shit. Cause I'm a used car salesman kind of guy, you know? So it's, it's just, it's, I wish there was a way I could totally purify. It. And if I, if I really can find the true faith, I know that I'll experience the grace where I can just be that. I'd never wanted to be a guru, but I think I want to now because I just want to sit there and give away everything for free. And if I, and then I can just get kind of like a little gut and get skinny <laughs> and gray and have the gray beard and the gray hair. And I'm not in a hurry, but then I can just I can just relax. Right. And I don't have to be young forever. And I don't have to have muscles. And I don't have to look like anything. I can just be myself. Nice. That's my dream, you know. I can't wait till that day. But that's that's on me. That's on me. I'm the one who's like tight. You know, <laughs> what if I do gain, get fat and get a gut and don't have a six pack anymore? Or I do get too skinny. Or, you know, then they won't watch my videos and I won't be able to pay my truck payment. Oh, no, you know. And that's what I'm saying. Those are the anxieties that are associated. But then Ramana Maharshi, he just walked to the mountain, sat there at 16 years old, and he never said anything or did anything. And the whole ashram just built up around him. <laughs> that's not really my dream. <laughs> right? It's pretty cool, though. <laughs> right, though. But he, so he didn't, he didn't do anything. And then the whole next thing you know, he's one of the world's famous gurus just sitting there saying nothing. Right. And finally, he eventually started talking because people didn't get the silent teachings. So he needed to use words. And that's what we do now is we use words, but we try to emanate some kind of thing. So I just hope the best for everyone. I really do have good intentions. I truly enjoy this. Thank you, gentlemen, for holding such great space for the channel. I try not to take it personally. I don't really need to be the star of the show. It just ends up happening like that. So it's awesome. God bless everyone and this planet and you know, I mean, I'm just like, God bless everyone. God bless you too with finances and, and God's grace and health that you might help millions of people and that this love bubble that's spreading around the earth continues to grow and we cover the earth with just love and light and rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> that's phenomenal. You dig it. Great. And you dig it. Thanks a lot, guys. Of course. For Thanks for coming on, Dan. It yeah. was awesome. Okay. Yeah, How do we do this? What do we do? And MP, you have anything less words than like? I, uh, I think I think it's all been said, man. Uh, we we could keep going. That was just so amazing, so beautiful. Um, it was awesome. 
hearing this from you. I mean, really, it was just like, I just can't stop laughing. I'm just like so happy right now. <laughs> like it was so, it was just so awesome. Definitely a blessing to be here right now. So thanks. Thanks so much for doing that. Agreed. Yeah. I think that in, in today's world, a lot of people think that they have to like take for themselves and they don't realize that the real gift mentality is how you not only give, but you get back. And Dan, you are a prime example of someone who just puts it out there and look at all the riches around you, whether it's your health or the beautiful people or the amazing relationships. I'm so blessed and honored and I love you, man. I'm so glad that I found you. I'm so glad I had that initial consult. So if you're watching, get a consult with DTM because <laughs> it is for sure life-changing. You can be at your lowest point and the guy makes you feel like you're still a valuable person, which is why what I try to emanate as well through hungry people and through all the people I interact with. You're such a good example, man. And I really needed that in my life because there's not always been, it hasn't always been there. You know, I've had good people, but someone that also has, has high standards and who just wants a better life and who wants to do it in a way where they bring people up and not just, you know, screw people out of money or energy. Uh, yeah. I know that I bring that into what I do and the future relationships I have. Dan, thanks so much for coming on. People are going to love this and I cannot wait to officially meet you in a couple months. <laughs> Dude, we're getting close, dude. Aren't we like about like uh, we're about almost like six weeks away, bro? Something crazy, yeah. <laughs> six weeks away, we're having our family reunion, so I'm stoked. And I guess just one thing: generosity is the key because that's the door yeah. that opens up, but then that allows the door to be open more wide to receive. And that was something I learned over the years. Generosity is key. Give whatever you can. Give to all who ask of you. If it's a quarter, if it's a dollar, you know, some, I love giving out twenties and then they're just like in shock. And I'm just like, well, dude, I mean, you know, I could eat that in bananas in one day. You know? <laughs> and then uh, it's really a matter of just, it's really a matter of being grateful for this gift of life. To be born a human is truly rare. To have this, to have this consciousness, to be able to to work with the universe, with the karma, to be aware of it. It's just like, you want to be your best because you want to just say, thank you, God, for giving life, for being life, for giving me this chance to just be here now. And you just want to be your best to honor the beloved, you know, which I call God, you know? And so there's a million reasons to be the best you can be for your family, your friends, your community. And most of all, just, just that amazing creator, creativity, creation, source energy that has given you life. And just like, let's worship, dude. I just want to worship, dude. I'm just <laughs> like, I just want to worship and be devoted, you know? And That's I just great. love it. I'm so grateful Amen. For, for God, you know? It's awesome. Cool. Well, guys, that's all we have for you guys here today. Uh, thanks for staying with us all the way to the end here. Uh, it was an awesome episode. Um, stay up, be great. Always keep it hunted, baby. Stay hungry. Peace. <laughs>